the Paracave Podcast, proudly brought to you by major sponsor Jack's Pale Ale, exclusively available at Paramount Leash Club, Shannon Cooney from Glenmore Park Realty, BT ZD Clothing, and the official media partner of the Paracave Podcast, the Parramatta Times. Welcome to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. And now over to your host, Troy Warner, broadcasting live from the world-famous Paracave. And yes, hello and welcome back to another episode of the Paracave Podcast. Troy here, and it is Team List Tuesday, and this is the tipping podcast for round seven now last week i managed to get six out of eight so if you followed my tips i got six and you would have as well i missed out on the roosters win against the knights and the dragons win against the tigers so did you go opposite to me and get a perfect round then who knows let me know uh but Six out of eight last week and six out of eight the week before. So pretty consistent tipping there. So I think I'm doing not too bad if I can blow my own trumpet at the moment. So hoping to get maybe seven or a perfect round this weekend in round seven. Let's kick it off. It is the Roosters versus the Storm at Allianz Stadium and on Thursday night, 7.50 p.m. Now the Storm in second position on the ladder, the Roosters in ninth. Let's have a look at the team list. Now James Tedesco, the captain, is back at fullback after his HIA concussion protocol. So he is back, which is great to see. Connor Watson stays in at 5'8". Luke Keary still in at halfback. But the news is that Sam Walker is on a extended bench there, number 22. So potentially he may play or maybe just give him another week off. So uh, that's why Luke is at halfback and Connor is in at six. So they're the big ins for the Sydney Roosters. For the Melbourne Storm, a big fella, he makes his... Uh, NRL season 2024 debut, Nelson Asofa Solomona. He comes back into the Melbourne Storm team at prop, starting prop. He's been playing in the Queensland, uh, sorry, uh, for their North Sydney Bears team, I think, that the Melbourne Storm are affiliated with now. Uh, so in the New South Wales Cup. So he is back in the front row position, so a bit of firepower there for Melbourne. Um, also, two on the bench, Joe Chan, son of Alex Chan, former Melbourne and Parramatta player. He comes onto the bench as well. And Tepoi Maroa and Tui Kamakamitha, he they drop out of the side. So uh, the Melbourne Storm, they had a pretty impressive win against the Bulldogs last week. Only got away with it by two points. Uh, but still, the Bulldogs, they put up a fight. But the Melbourne Storm, they still came away with the win. Another game last week between Munster and Jerome Hughes. So great to see them still in the halves there this week as well. Pretty sort of traditional rivals, the Roosters and the Storm. They always seem to have great games against each other. Their last meeting last year was 18 points to 13 to the Melbourne Storm. So a very low scoring game. The Storm beat the Roosters again at the um, Allianz 30 points to 16 before that as well in the middle of the year. So... Look, uh, the Melbourne Storm, they seem to have the wood over the Roosters at the moment. Um, Since 1998, they've played 48 times. The Storm have won 29 and the Roosters 19. So, look, this one is going to be a great game, but I think it's going to be really hard to tip. 
I'm going to tip the... Uh, I didn't tip the Roosters last week, and I'm not going to tip them again this week. I'm going to tip the Melbourne Storm to get the win in this game over the Roosters, even though the Roosters are at home. I just think with... With Sam Walker still out, I think that may be a little bit of a factor. The Melbourne Storm, relatively full strength, and with the um, with the introduction of Nelson, Big Nelson, back into the squad as well. So that looks like a pretty strong team to me. So I'm going to tip the Storm in that one. The next game is on the first game on the Friday night, 6 p.m. Sees the Dragons take on the Warriors. The Warriors had a draw last week against Manly in New Zealand. The Dragons had a good win over the Tigers at West uh, at Campbelltown out west uh, at Campbelltown Sports Stadium. So this game is being played at Wynn Stadium, where I have said before that the Dragons they tend to grow an extra leg down in Wollongong. I don't know what it is. But they just seem to play a little bit better down there. Um, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's Coach Shane Flanagan. Maybe they love just playing down at Wollongong for some reason. But they seem to go a little bit better down there. But uh, Zach Lomax moves back into the centre position uh, due to Jack Bird being out of this game. So, look... Zach has been playing some unbelievable football on the wing for the Dragons. Now, he wasn't too happy, I guess, playing on the wing, but he's doing what is best for the team at the moment uh, and has just signed a new four-year deal starting next year at the Parramatta Eels. So something I'm very excited about and other Parramatta fans as well. Could Zach be the X Factor there for the Eels next year and beyond for the next four years anyway so uh exciting news for zach there we do see sometimes that players who either i guess sign a contract with their own club uh for an extension or whatever they seem to play better will that work for a player who has signed for another club for next year who knows but i think uh, now that it is all settled, uh, Zach can just concentrate on playing football for the Dragons this year before he moves to the Parramatta Eels, but more on that a- another time. For the Warriors, uh, Jazz Tavanga is out, and look, they've still got a pretty good squad, the Warriors, and uh, look, um, no main changes there. Roger Tuivasa Shek has been playing some great footy. And the last time these two sides played down in Wollongong, it was a 30 point margin to the Warriors, 48 points to 18. But the next game after that, that they played last year, was over in New Zealand. And it was 18 points to 6 in favour of the Warriors as well. So a much improved effort there from the Dragons to be 18 points to 6 there. So, look, this could be a, a close game. Uh, as I said, the Dragons play a little bit better down in Wollongong. The Warriors in 7th position in the ladder at the moment. The Dragons 13th. So, look, a big game for the Dragons. I do think the Warriors will get this win. The next game is the Eels who taking on the Dolphins up there at TIO Stadium in Darwin. So the annual game that goes up to Darwin each year from the Parramatta Eels. And they go into this game favourites, even though the Dolphins are higher up on the ladder at the moment in fifth position. But the Dolphins, they've got some major injury and suspension issues at the moment. So uh, they may find it difficult to play up there in Darwin with this side that they have who knows? But for Parramatta, the only change that they have 
that beat the North Queensland Cowboys last week is Blaze Talangi. He comes back into the side on the interchange bench at number 17. And Kelma Tulagi, he goes back to 19th man on the extended bench for Parramatta. So that's the only change there, which is good. Dylan Brown still named at halfback. Dijan Arce at number 6. Uh, Morgan Harper still in the centre. Centres Bailey Simonson on the wing. Now for the Dolphins, as I said, major injury problems. We already knew about Herbie Farmworth being out. Uh, Tom Flegler, he was going to play last week, but he was a late withdrawal, and he is out of the game this week as well. And the big one for the Dolphins last week was Hamaso Tabuai Fado. He has a hamstring injury, so he'll be out for an extended period. So he is out. Trey Fuller takes his spot in the fullback position for the Dolphins. Now, I don't know too much about Trey, so please, if you know anything about him, let me know. But that could be a that could be a little bit of an X factor uh, for the Dolphins. Maybe the Parramatta Eels don't know much about him either, but uh, he certainly isn't no Hamaso Tabuai Fado. So uh, a big loss for the Dolphins. Uh, Jake Avarillo and Tessie New they do the cent- they are the centre pairing once again. Uh, and Anthony Milford is suspended as well. Sean O'Sullivan comes back onto the interchange bench. Ray Stone playing against his old club. Jared Wallace, who scored a try last week as well. So Max Plath, he comes back into the side as well after having a suspension in at the lock position. So, look, this is a great game up in Darwin. This will be, hopefully, they're going to be a big crowd. It's the first time that the Eels have played the Dolphins in Darwin. The Eels have got a 66% win rate up there. They've played nine games at TIA Stadium for six wins. There, it was funny, little bit of a streak there. Their first three games they won, then they lost the game. The next three they won, and then they lost two in a row now. So hopefully they don't get the trifecta in losses this weekend. They've played North Queensland three times, Brisbane twice, Canberra twice, Penrith and the Gold Coast the first one time, and the first time they're playing the Dolphins. Funnily enough, the uh, referee that is refereeing this game is Todd Smith, and the last time the Eels played up in Darwin was, uh, and Todd Smith was the referee, it was to North Queensland. Parramatta lost that match. They won the penalty count 6-3, and a funny little stat here that Jack, Jack, Jake Arthur, sorry, uh, he played 5-8 to Mitchell Moses, and Dylan Brown played in the centre position there. So that was in 2022. So, look, I think Parramatta will get confidence out of last week's win against the Cowboys. This is a big game for them as well. Uh, they come back next week in round eight and play Manly at Brookvale and then they have the bye so a very crucial game for them just to try and keep on getting the wins get their season going and get into that top eight so I'm going to tip the Eels in that one the next the first game on Super Saturday 3 p.m is out at Bathurst, Carrington Park, Bathurst. So the traditional game that the Panthers take out there. And this game last year against the West Tigers, they actually lost 12 points to 8. It was pretty harrowing conditions out there. It was pretty rain and wet and stuff like that. So uh, I think I think by memory, maybe this could have been Jareem Buller's first game. Um, that was the first time we saw him in a Tigers jersey. Uh, no, it wasn't. It was against merely Raringa. So, uh, but it was one of his first few games I remember that he played in Tigers colours in first grade. So, um, yeah, I think he did a. a Try saving tackle on Nathan Cleary from memory. Now the Panthers, they had the bye last week, so they'll be fresh, ready to go. Uh, no real changes for them. Scott Sorensen, sorry, he comes into the second row. 
uh, back from injury. And um, look, still no Nathan Cleary. Pretty smart move, I think, by the Panthers. They will know, he will know himself if he's right to go and uh, just give him another week off with that hamstring injury. You don't want to bring him back too early. And if you can afford to leave him out of the team and get the win, that's a bonus. So another week off for Nathan Cleary. And look, for the Tigers, Lachlan Galvin, he comes back into the side after suspension for two weeks. So great news there for Tigers fans. That young Lachlan Galvin comes back. John Bateman comes back as well into the squad, into the second row. So look, as as the Tigers have been playing some good footy this year i was really disappointed with them last week against the dragons i thought they could get the win uh but the dragons showed me and tigers fans otherwise um so i was pretty disappointed with the tigers i think Penrith will get this win and i think they may do it comfortably out there in bathurst the second game on saturday sees the titans the gold coast titans take on the manly sea eagles so look these two teams nearly played draws last week uh the titans lost to canberra in a golden point extra Extra time game, 21 points to 20. The Sea Eagles actually did play a draw, so against the Warriors, 22 all. So, look, two road trips in a row for the Manly side. Uh, As I said before, they take on Parramatta at Brookvale next week. But two road trips in a row. Des Hasler coaching up against one of his old teams, the Manly Sea Eagles. He was a Manly legend at the club um so that'll be interesting for him but look the titans they really stuck it to the canberra raiders and probably were the unlucky team not not to win that game um we saw during the week monday graham annesley say that chevy stewart was uh, from canberra was actually offside uh when the kieran for an attempt at field goal was charged down so little bit of uh, disappointment there for the Gold Coast Titans. Uh, Jaden Campbell is out again, unfortunately, but Philip Sami, he comes back into the fullback position there to replace him. And look, still the halves combination of AJ Brimson and Kieran Foran. And look, I think the... Uh, uh, look, the Manly side, sorry, I'll just go through that one quickly. Ben Travojevic is out, but Ruben Garrick comes back into the side to replace him. Um, Josh Alloye is out due to suspension from that controversial charge down with Sean Johnson. So Matt Lodge, he comes into the starting squad, number 10 prop for Manly in his first game in the NRL season of 2024. So he comes into that spot there. And Aaron Woods has been named at number 16 on the interchange bench as well. So a little bit of a a, with um, Sipley out as well. So look, uh, this is going to be an interesting game because a few people have tipped the Titans, I think, that they have told me. And again, like the Dragons, sometimes the Titans at home play a different type of football and they're pretty hard to beat out there. The other in, I should say, for the Manly Sea Eagles is Jason Saab. Uh, He comes back from a hamstring injury, so he's back in the squad as well. So that's great to see. He can be an excitement machine watching him run, run, run. Um, Look, as I said, it could be an interesting game, this one. I think Manly will get the win. Uh, They go into the game as favourites, but I think they will get the win. And look, the last time they played, the Gold Coast got the win at Brookvale and the Gold Coast got the win up at Gold Coast in 2022. They only played one time last year uh, and the Gold Coast got the chocolates that day. 
but I think the Manly side will get this win. Sorry, Titans fans, I don't think you'll get your first win of the season. The great game that's to come on Saturday, the last game on Saturday, is the Broncos taking on the Raiders. Now, the Broncos are in 10th spot. The Raiders in third. Still no Adam Reynolds for Brisbane. So Jock Madden once again takes that halfback spot. Reese Walsh, he played last week. So another run under his belt is good for him. Uh, Jesse Arthur's on the wing. Corey Oates is there as well. There was a little bit of talk about... um, uh, Dean Mariner coming back. Uh, from injury to take up his spot on the wing. He was running at training, but uh, he hasn't been named. So, look, I think this Brisbane side, they are pretty dominant at home. Uh, Canberra, though, they have stuck it out this year. They have unfortunately lost Zach Hosking, who has been one of their players of the year so far this this year. Chevy Stewart, he retains his fullback spot, obviously with Jordan Rapiner out for a while now. Um, so he is grabbing that fullback spot. Uh, Ethan Strange, he's been playing some great footy for Canberra in the 5'8th position, only a young bloke, and he has been playing some great footy. Jamal Fogarty leading the team around as well. So, um, look, 29 points to 18 last year up in uh, down in Canberra, and the Raiders actually up at Suncorp last year got the win, 20 points to 14. So, look, they have a good record, I think, up in, in Brisbane, the Raiders, but I think the Broncos will get this win in this one. Sunday, 2 p.m. at Accor Stadium, sees the Bulldogs take on the Knights. Now, the Knights in 14th position, the Bulldogs in 15th position. The Knights go into this game as slight favourites, um, but the the... Yeah, I think the Bulldogs, they'll give them a good shake as well. Uh, Connor Tracy, he retains that fullback position with Blake Taff. He is named at, on the interchange bench at number 17. So uh, he retains that spot. Liam Knight, he is named on an extended bench. Um, so no real changes there. But I think, look, Viliami Kikau, he's been playing some great footy. He's right up there in the Dally M's at the moment. Uh, just on that edge, he's um, certainly made a difference. Stephen Crichton goes back to uh, centre and captain. Bronson Cherry has made a, a good comeback to rugby league. And Jacob Kiraz, he goes back to the wing as well to make way for Stephen Crichton to come back into the centres. So uh, for Newcastle, Caelan Pong has been named despite that hip injury. Uh, Greg Marzu on the wing. They've retained the halves of Jack Cogger and Jackson Hastings, which I think is a good thing because I think it's good to keep uh, consistency and the, the same halves just to try and prove themselves and uh, get those combinations happening as well. So um, good to see that happening. Uh, so look, pretty much the same sides as that played last week. No real outs. Look, the Bulldogs, they'll give it a good shake. Um, they have been what I think has been the most improved team of 2024 so far. Newcastle, look, they start, they're start. starting off the same as last year as well. Hopefully for them and Knights supporters, they won't want to leave their run too late and they won't want to win 10 in a row like they did last year to make the finals. So uh, I think they will get this win in, against the Bulldogs last year at uh, Newcastle, they smashed them 42 points to 6. And the game before that was at a cool stadium as well. And unfortunately, Bulldogs fans, that was a day you will want to forget as it was 66 points to nil. 
So, yes, you will want to forget that one, but last year's Bulldogs team is nothing like this year's Bulldogs team. So, as I said, the most improved team, I think, uh, in 2024. But I still think that Newcastle will get this win. The last game of round number seven sees the Sharks take on the Cowboys. 4.05 p.m. at Points Bet Stadium. Sione Katoa is out for the Cronulla Sharks. Samuel Stone Street comes onto the wing uh, for Sione. And if uh, I don't know much about Samuel, uh, so if anybody knows any much about him, please let me know. Um, and for the Cowboys, Murray Tuolagi is out with an injury. Semi Valamai, he comes onto the wing in place of him. Other than that, no real changes to either side. The Sharks, they had the bye last week. And the Cowboys, they lost to the Parramatta Eels in at Combank Stadium. The Sharks sitting on top of the ladder. They go into this game as favourites. Sunday afternoon e slash evening, the game will finish under lights. Um, you would like to think that there's a full house crowd there, and you would like to think that Cronulla will get this win. Although the the Cowboys, they don't seem to travel too well, um, and the Sharks seem to have the recent wood on the Cowboys. The last two games, the Sharks have got the win, so. Uh, both up there in Queensland and at Points Bet Stadium. So um, the Cowboys, they won't want to have two losses in a row because uh, once you start having a couple of losses in a row, the pressure starts mounting. Uh, you start slipping down that ladder. They're currently in fourth spot. They won't want to lose too many more. Um, otherwise, they'll slip again back out of the top eight. The Sharks, they'll want to stay right up at the top of the ladder. And right, look, I think Cronulla will get this win against. So I'm going to tip Cronulla against the Cowboys uh, on Sunday. I think this will be a close game, though. I'm not too sure. It'll be about like a 20 points to 16 game. I think it'll be a 1 to 12 game. Uh, I think anyway. So I'm going for the Sharks. And the South Sydney Rabbitohs, they have the bye in round seven. So two points guaranteed for them which is what they will like at the moment because they have been struggling all year so guaranteed two points for them so just recapping my tips for round seven if you want to write them down or put them in your tipping competitions right now when you hear this is the storm to beat the roosters the warriors to beat the dragons eels to beat dolphins panthers to beat tigers sea eagles to beat the titans broncos to beat the raiders knights to beat the bulldogs and the sharks to beat the cowboys thank you very much for listening let me know what your tips are and if they are any different to mine uh, as i said the last two weeks i've got six out of eight i'm hoping to get eight out of eight this week but may your tips be good and may your footy team win and i will hopefully hope that Parramatta beat the Dolphins this weekend up in Darwin. So enjoy your footy over the weekend. That's my tips for the week. There'll be a recap later on in the week, I guess, uh, or a review next week to see how many tips I got. So stay tuned. Stay tuned to the Instagram socials and enjoy your footy this weekend. Enjoy your footy. for listening to another episode of the Paracade Podcast. See you next time.